Hey guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica, and I'm super excited to have you join me today as we have a follow-up to our designing video. Today we are creating our own stippling design, but make sure you have subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications, that way you can check out all of our latest and greatest videos. But back to our design, we have a lot of great tips and tricks, so make sure you tune in to the very end, and I'll give you all the details I have. All right guys, so here we are in Silhouette Studio. Now, if you missed our first video on setting up your own stipple design, make sure that you check that out because that's what we've done here. We're taking that exact design that we already created and we're going to do an easy stippling tool using a marker today. So not stippling in the sense of stippling on an actual stippling media like the aluminum sheets or a couple other different options, but this is super easy. These are tools that you probably already have. So makes it really fun to play with and kind of test out the waters on your stippling journey. So what we're going to do, I have a black marker and a white sheet of cardstock. So this image here, which like I said, we already created in our stippling video is what we're going to stipple onto a white sheet of cardstock. Now I already have my Cameo 4 out and I have my tools. So let's go ahead and show you how to set up the software settings. And then I want to tell you more about what I'm going to do over out on my Cameo 4, okay? So I wanna make sure that is set to plain cardstock. This part may be new for you guys. You want to go ahead and put in your whatever sketch material that you're going to use. Like I'm using a pen with a third party pen holder. So I'm going to use sketch, make sure that it says sketch over here and not cut. And then you're going to switch your tool to pen. Okay. So from here, what I can do is go ahead. I want to load my sheet just like it is here on the mat. And then I'm going to go over the tools with you guys to load that pen into your machine. So as soon as we're ready, I'll come back here and I'll click send. But this is what it looks like here in the software. I'm not going to change anything with the force or the speed. You could up the speed if you, because we're not actually cutting. If you wanted to um, have your job go faster, then you can come in here and adjust the speed. So um, that's completely up to you. We don't need multiple passes, um, but for a really large stippling job, that speed may be really useful, okay? So let's go ahead and head on over to our Cameo 4, and I'm gonna tell you more about what I'm using today. All right, guys, so here we are. As promised, this is just a regular cutting mat, a regular sheet of white cardstock. The pen that I'm using today is actually one of these very inexpensive fine point Crayola markers. I do have a craft stick, which is important for the next part because this, ladies and gentlemen, is the third party pen holder that I'm gonna use. Now I've had this for a long time. This was actually made to fit in the Cameo 3. So what I have done is I did make an adjustment. It was a little bit thin. I needed a little bit more substance on the bottom. So I wrapped some electrical tape, but if you buy one that is specific to your machine, if you buy one for the Cameo 4, or if you have a Cameo 3, these are sized to fit in your machine, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead, this goes right here in carriage one. One. And what I'm going to do is this has, all right, let's try to look down the middle. Let's see if you guys can see. Do you see that little pin that goes all the way through? What I'm going to do is I will open this up. It does fit in here. And once I set it to fit snugly, then I will tighten down the little screw here to hold it in place. But that's where the craft stick comes into play. So let's go ahead and slide this bad boy all the way in. And I'm going to lock it. Okay, I'm gonna take the tip off of my marker and I'm going to slide this, I'm sliding my craft stick underneath my roller so that it is underneath the empty area. Okay, I'm going in at an angle. It is underneath the empty area of carriage one. So I'm gonna slide my marker down. Okay, and my marker is resting on my craft stick. So now I can tighten down my little holding screw here and pull my marker out. Okay, see where it left a little uh, dot and a line? What that means is that's gonna give me some clearance for using my marker. Now I do wanna make sure that it is screwed down tightly so that it doesn't move, but I will be able to take my mat, take my cardstock, 
line it up here. Remember, because we did it in landscape mode in the software. And then I'm going to load my mat, line it up with the rollers here. Okay, now in the software, I'm going to hit send. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start that stippling process. All right, so here we are. Our stippling project is done, but I do have some tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you throughout this experience because I have done stippling before, but I do feel like every time you do, especially because it's not something I do often, there are always things that you're going to learn along the way. And that's why I always test out this stuff with you guys. That way you can learn the things that I learned too. So super exciting. Let me go ahead and say that this is not obviously the mat that I started with. So let's go ahead and unload. I'm gonna get this all out of the way and then I'm gonna tell you all the different things that we've learned. Okay, so first and foremost, let me say I switched mats, okay? I did find, well, I also switched pins. So I switched pins and I switched mats. <laughs> I actually really like the coverage that I was getting from this Crayola marker, but um, I had an error happen where it was saturating the paper too much. I don't know if you can see um, that it started warping a little bit due to the marker ink. So what I started having was a lot of drag lines and obviously that's not, you see even down here it was catching the edge. Um, so I switched out pens and I got more fine coverage. This is actually one of the Cricut pens and it held up really good. I was going to start over and put my Crayola marker back in, but also in the course of testing, the tip of it dried out. So being that this was such a long project, even when I started um, adding water to the tip to kind of reactivate it and get the ink flowing again, I was afraid it was going to dry out and who wants to waste all that time. So I did switch it out for one of these Cricut pens. Now when I say a long time, this literally took um, probably the better part of three hours. It's because it's so large, but if you guys just set it and let it go, it'll do its thing. Now, when I switched out to the Cricut mat, I did start my paper a little higher. And the reason that I switched out to the Cricut mat was because it is also sturdier. Cricut mats are sturdier than silhouette mats, and I felt that it would hold it better in the long run because I also noticed when my mat was feeding through my machine that it had a little bit of wobble to it. So I was afraid to restart it without um, switching out the mat. So we switched out the Cricut mat, we switched to a Cricut pen. Now with the adapter that I showed you, obviously you can use a large variety of pens. One thing that I noticed the pen instead of the marker is this is more of a felt tip pen. Okay, now I'm not a pen professional, but I felt like it gave me um, more longevity than I was going to get out of the marker tip. So just a couple of tips that I wanted to share along the way is try to find a pen or marker that's gonna have that felt tip rather than a marker tip. I think the marker, I've used it before and it works great for smaller projects or if you're going to do any type of writing. Uh, but the felt tip really came in and I got a lot of really fine and awesome detail. So ultimately, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Now, you're going to ask what I can do with this. Really, I can do anything I want. This isn't a process that I would use for card making or anything. Um, what I'm going to consider like a supposed to be a quick project because there's a lot of time investment. Um, but this is something I would frame. I would absolutely trim this and frame it. This is um, roughly eight by eight. So an eight by eight frame or shadow box would be fabulous for these. So I think that's what I would choose to do with it. Now you can use it for smaller projects, but because of the time, I mean, like I said, three hours is a really, really long time. So because of the time investment, I'm not sure that I would do it for such, you know, a what we'll call a, a short-term project, something that you're gonna, you know, give, and then, you know, maybe it's gonna be tossed, maybe it'll be kept, who's really sure. But I just mean for this type of time investment, 
And really the results are very, very stunning. So those are my tips. If you can use a sturdier mat, now it doesn't have to be a Cricut mat, but um, they do make a few third party uh, cutting mats that you get them on Amazon, but they're a similar type of material than the Silhouette mats. Also getting one that is stickier, I think would help if you do use this sort of um, marker tip, that way you get it held down to the paper to help prevent that warping. Um, try to get a felt tip marker instead, or rather a felt tip pen instead of a marker to also help prevent that warping from the ink. And for the most part, this is it for today's project. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you learned a few things between the software video and then our tips and trick video, but I'm very, very impressed with the results. I like it a lot. And let's go ahead and wrap it up. So guys, what did you think about our stippling project? I know you may be like, Becky, I don't wanna make that. Guys, you will never regret experimenting with your machine and trying out new things because you never know what you're gonna like or when you're gonna need a certain technique for your projects. And this is one that you won't regret, I promise. It's very inexpensive. I mean, all you need is a pen, cardstock, and some sort of pen holder. If you don't have a pen, guys, I promise you, there are very inexpensive tools that you can use to get this drawn on effect. So you're going to like it. I know you will. If you have any questions or comments, definitely make sure you leave those down below. I tried to answer as many as I could in the video with, uh, you know, all the switching that I had to do. I wanted to share those tips with you guys. I want you to see that these are real life crafts and I go along with the struggle with you, but we all learn together. So I'm going to wrap it up for today, guys, but make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, maybe share with a crafty friend, help us keep growing the channel, and we will keep bringing you these really awesome videos. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you, and we'll see you again next time.